Hello fellow old schoolers and welcome to some more old school magic. Um, after I've uh, gotten a hold of so many uh, robots for Skynet, I'm just gonna clown around a bit here and make uh, some different brews, um, just as a spicy element to it. So I've come up with this that I call the Demon Engine. And what we're about to see here is a best of five. So perhaps get a drink and a snack because we're gonna be here a while. Uh, let me know in the comment section, you guys, if this is too long. Um, sometimes these very long videos for me, they don't get as many likes. So that might be just because it's simply it takes too long. But sometimes I like just to do them and get a marathon in here. So yeah, uh, let's go over the decks here. Yeah, so this deck is like a sacrifice deck. The king of the hill, the demon, is uh, on top of uh, the deck picture there. That's the Yokmoth demon. And uh, theme-wise, he's like the sibling of the Lord of the Pit, except that he's from antiquities. And very rarely sees play, as far as I know. Uh, even more rare than the Lord of the Pit. And he can only munch artifacts. And if he doesn't uh, eat an artifact, he'll tap and do two damage to its controller. So it becomes totally worthless, uh, unlike a lot of the pit that can still attack. Even if you don't sacrifice a creature to him. Though the Yakmoth Demon, he doesn't punish you as severely. And it doesn't have Tremble, but it does have First Strike instead. 6-6 six, six, Flying First Strike. So it can still be double bolted, unlike a lot of the pit. And Tremble is better, but he's still a big creature to tangle with. He can even slap around a Shivan Dragon or a Mahamoti Jin uh, if he wants to. And uh, under him, we have a bunch of robots here. Two Triskillians, a Tetravis, and four Sushis that are like um, the robot army. Uh, under them, again, we have the Priesthood. These are the guys that worship the Yokmoth demon and tend to the artifact creatures. We have the Yokmoth priests here, and he can uh, tap to destroy an artifact, and I'll gain mana equal uh, to its casting cost in black mana. So he's like insane if you sacrifice a sushi uh, you'll get four colorless mana from the sushi going to the graveyard and four black mana on top of that and imagine that with fireballs that disintegrate you can really ramp them up fast uh, like that uh, you can also play a triskillion shoot uh, all the candles from the triskillion and then sag it for six black mana to play the yakmoth demon or just another triskillion or to travis uh, same way with to travis you can split into uh, four 1-1 one, one flyers, but you can still sack the main Tetravis and gain 6 black mana because he still costs 6 mana to cast. The other uh, type of priest is uh, this guy, the Sage of Labnam, and he can tap just to crack an artifact to draw a card. This also functions with the um, mana vaults that I can tap to cast these big beaters and then sack him to the uh, Sage of Labnam to even more draw power. And if needs be, the Sage can also just munch a bunch of uh, used up Triskillians uh, to Travis counters, stuff like that. So there'll be a lot of sacked artifacts here. I don't know if there's enough food for the Yakmoth demon, we'll see. I got a hold of a Diamond Valley here, very spicy card, and I'm just putting him in here just to uh, continue the sacrifice theme. The deck is blue, red, and black, and we also have an animate dead to get them straight back. The demonic tutor and the mind twist. For blue, we have a copy artifact. We have the mana drain. We have the three blue power cards and a brain geyser. And those brain geysers can get rather huge as well with those uh, Yakmoth priests here. And then we have all the burn, like three lightning bolts and three uh, fireballs. I think in the beginning of the game it disintegrates because I feared uh, uh, set trolls and uh, uh, what do you call it, um, disc controls a bit. But I think fireballs are better because those fireballs will get rather huge. And it's just great to just burn everything out. It's coming up against uh, the Bantam Gedon here. And Bantam Gedon is like a tier 1 uh, tournament deck. Uh, it's Unum Gedon but with blue. So you have the Serendipity Freets usually in there. Uh, and you also have the um, Energy Fluxen just to uh, both destroy uh, uh, artifact mana. And then you can use Armageddon's uh, to destroy all the lands after you've cast a big beater. But in this game, uh, we didn't play with sideboards. It's just main deck versus main deck. So uh, the pilot of this uh, was courteous enough to take the energy flux out uh, because uh, the demon engine won't have access to its red blasts uh, to remove it. And those energy flux will just crack, uh, crush the um, 
there won't even be a game, I think, once it hits the table. We need the red blasts against them, uh, as the demon engine doesn't have access to white or disenchants. So, yeah, it's just a very efficient deck. We put in uh, an extra disenchant and an extra source to plowshares instead of the two energy fluxen. So it will be very um, efficient in its removal. It has a three Serenity Befreets, and three Unumgins, a couple of Serangels, Angels, and those Agothian Pixies that have protection from artifacts. Uh, it will be very brutal here. There's also the Sonic Blasts, and uh, there are four Sonic uh, Sol Sol Plowshares now. There's removal and four Disenchants. So, yeah, it's just a brutal pack of cardboard, uh, having very efficient removal and very efficient creatures. So, let's get ready for round number one here. We have the Demon Engine on the right, starting off with the Library of Alexandria. It's a very good start. It is obviously better when you're on the draw, but still, second round, uh, drawing with the Library, getting down a workshop, ooh, and a Mox. Now, if I play another card, I, I will be out of Library range here, so just waiting a bit. I can imagine that when Bantam Geddon gets within range of an of a Armageddon, he'll cast it. That's a Black Lotus, though. Okay, two are going in Pixies here. Very, very brutal. Uh, they can't be... Uh, artifact creatures can't do damage to them. I'm not even sure they can be blocked by Artifact creatures. I can't really remember. Time walking here. Yeah, just to get uh, more land drops and hopefully get into some creatures and more draws. Badlands coming out. Yeah, so disintegrate on the hand of the uh, demon engine here. Um, they'll be later on uh, changed to fireballs, but in the first few games here, uh, they are. Only, oh, okay, lightning bolt in one of them. Um, they disintegrates instead. So here we can see it would have been better with the fireball, just wait a single turn, and then or perhaps not draw with the library and then fireball both creatures out. Okay, Sater Blood now I'm hitting the table, so he can trade with that a golden pixies if needs be. And I think he will, because uh, the golden pixies is pretty annoying with a deck like this. Okay, he gets source to clash out immediately. And then the golden pixies and a factory comes over for four points of damage. It might look odd that uh, it's a soft plasher, but those saves of that number are actually very, very nice because uh, once they don't have summoning sickness, whenever you want to remove an artifact, uh, I gain a card from it because you can just sack the artifact before the disenchant takes effect. Okay, here's the disintegrate on the Agodian Pixies and a defending factory coming out here. So getting the defenses in place here, passing the turn back to Bantam Geddon. And the Demon Engine is reluctant to play too many cards in the turn here, just he wants to keep within library range, or oh, I do. Okay, second factory coming out, so now I can trade with the other factory. And I can't even block with my factory as it has summoning sickness, so it can't pump itself. So he gets in for three here. Dark Ritual. Two Dark Rituals and a Demonic Tutor. Yeah, um, in the first iteration of this deck, there were Dark Rituals in it. They uh, get removed pretty quickly, though. There aren't room for them. It was just another way to get robots and uh, Yakmoth Demons out fast, but Mana Vaults are superior. Uh, so I'll just stick with those. Tapping the, fact the Workshop for three mana. So there's a Triskillion coming out. And copying it. Okay, as a response, he sorts to Plashers, the Triskillion here, as a response to the copy artifact. Uh, so I'm shooting him for three. I could have shot the Triskillion itself for one, just to let it go to the graveyard instead, but I'd rather get the life and do the damage. Um, the, we looked this over, um, and we were a bit... Uh, we didn't really know if a copy artifact would fizzle as its target was removed on the impact here. But it turns out that you can actually uh, just target uh, any uh, another artifact here. 
So I'm activating the, the other factory and then I'm targeting that with the copy artifact. So now I have two factories uh, just to block his factories. Uh, it's a nice, nice little uh, trick to know that it doesn't have to fizzle the copy artifact when uh, a play like this happens. When you're playing it, you can just uh, yeah choose another one. But I can't pick the Triskillion anymore as it's it has been removed before the copy artifact takes effect. So paying a mana to activate the other factory and then I'm copying that instead. And yeah, we're just looking it over on the phone here. So now there are two factories defending, but I can only activate one of them. I can't pump it though twice, so they will hold the other factories back here. I can, Factory can become a 4-4 four, four, and an attacking factory can only become a 3-3. Three, three. Lenewelf coming out here. Yeah, he can't attack uh, because of the COVID. Uh, it's just factory here. So he passes the turn back. Okay, Time Twister. And he actually only had a couple of lands in hand, but I don't think I had any cards. So uh, it did provide a little card advantage here. And I am mana fixed, though the odds of him drawing into an Armageddon here is pretty huge. Uh, there's actually only a single non-land artifact mana, uh, non-land mana on each side. I have them a Mox and he has a Lena Wolf. So it might not be prudent of him to cast an Armageddon or I get also within library range, of course, that's pretty nice. Getting a Sushi out, now, now he needs to get rid of the Sushi before he can cast Armageddon, at least. At my end step, he doesn't chance it. Takes a point of damage from the City of Brass. Did he though? Huh. I thought he was at 14 before. Probably was at 15. Time walking here. Now he can actually attack me because... Ooh, a third factory. Okay, so he won't likely be casting Armageddon's now then. He, he tries to run me down with all those factories. And if I block this, I lose a factory for no obvious gain actually. So he attacks, he can pump it to a 4-4. And I can only pump to 3-3, so he does so here. Bringing me down to 10 points of life. And another elf. So if he didn't, if he hadn't played that third factory, uh, I'd think that he'd be lining up for an Armageddon. With those mana creatures. but he's well ahead in the factory war. Here he untaps again from the extra turn in the bank, cracking the Library of Alexandria with a strip mine. Another viable option here would be just to crack my factory, but he's playing for the long game here instead of trying to run me over. And he doesn't want the extra draw power from the Library of Alexandria as I have seven cards in hand, but I suppose that play is debatable. It is a safer play, because if I gain uh, control here, the library will make me win. Okay, taking with a single factory here, and I, I gotta block it, otherwise it's four points of damage again. And a bird coming out. At least that factory made it so that he couldn't all out attack me with both elves and all the factories um, on each side. Another factory drew into that, but yeah, there's another blocker there. Okay, Sushi coming out, trying to get the defenses up. Now it's time just to empty the hand because the Library of Alexandria is gone. Uh, so, um, there's no reason to hold back anymore. Also, I, I'm very close to getting overrun here, being down to 10 points of life. 
and with three factories and two Lanowells staring down, staring me down. So, okay, Sushi and one of these old priests coming out here, Sonic blasting the Sushi, and I can't even sag it to the Sage of Latnam yet because uh, he has summoning sickness. Two points of damage on Bantam Gedan though, bringing him down to 10 points of life. And actually, he's a 1-2, that Sage of Latnam, so he can block an elf uh, without any real problems here. Yeah, if he attacks with a single factory, he can pump himself into a 4-4, and I can block with one and become a 4-4 uh, with that copy artifact there. So um, we'll, we'll have to trade. Uh, he's not up for that though. Bringing down one of those Agudian Pixies instead. I'm skipping ahead because he's giving it a good think here. So here he comes. Attacking with one of the factories. And I'm blocking the mine. He's up for a trade obviously, but no. He's soft to plush as it. And I can't really sack it. But I can pump it with the other factory. I don't know why I don't do that. 3344, yeah. No, you should pump it. Yeah, so he does it after block here. I just needed to check that. Uh, so there's no reason. Otherwise, I would have uh, tapped the dying factory to activate the other factory and block him. Uh, but he does it after block. Uh, so I can then tap twice and get, gain four points of life. If you had done it at activation, uh, I could have it, uh, activated the other factory. Okay, Brain Guys are for two here. Not a lot, but it is, it is a desperate situation, so we might draw into some removal here. That would be nice. Or oh, a blocker. Chaos Orb coming out. I have a final mana from the workshop in the mana pool, but we have no mana, mana burn in Swedish, and I can't use uh, that mana to activate the Chaos Orb anyway. Okay, now he comes again with the Agothian Pixies and a factory ready to get pumped. So there's a bit of a dilemma here. I could block his factory with my factory, but that would actually just kill my factory and I won't be able to trade with him uh, because he can pump himself into a 4-4. Uh, then I could sack my factory and I'm considering this, uh, sack him to the city of Latinam in order to draw, but um, yeah, but I don't think I will. The thing is here, if I do that, the next turn he'll just overrun me with the last two factories. So actually, I kind of need to uh, use the Chaos Orb here uh, to get rid of the factory, or yeah, to get rid of the factory. It's always nice to have a Chaos Orb in, in, in hand against a Serra Angel on Ernamjian or something like that, but I can't risk it here. Um, I, need, I need to get out of this pickle. So Chaos Orbing the factory, and blocking the 2-1 Agothian Pixies with a 1-2 Sage of Latinam. And in Kitchen Table Magic, we always play with the Chaos Orb automatically hits. So this doesn't even matter. Just doing it here, uh, even missing it, but trading with him here. Now we have a single defending factory against his 2. That means next time he attacks, I'll be able to trade with another factory yet again. Because I'll have a blocking factory I can make into a 3-3. And he only has two factories now. Mana Vault coming out. Would have been nice to have kept the Sage of Latnam for that. To use it and then sacrifice it for more dwarves. Okay, mind twisting his hand. It's a, a burst of paradise and a savannah. Okay, it's a diamond valley. First time I'm playing with, that, with this uh, on camera. It is a new card. Wait, what's going on here? Uh, okay, I'm choosing to... Hmm. Just mind twist. 
yeah, just mind twist with the regular menace here. Makes more sense. So it takes with the factory. Using the mana vault to activate the, my own factory. Okay, that just screams I have a mana drain, but I had to do this. So we trade. Now I can't even eat it with a diamond valley. You're not allowed to do that, as I remember. You can't sacrifice a blocker like this to gain life. But at least we trade with the factory. Uh, slowly getting rid of all his attackers, but I'm also losing my bloggers. And now there's a tap mana vault doing damage to me as well, and no blockers left. Another mana vault coming out. I kind of need some blockers here. Wheeling, okay, that makes sense. He has a Serendipity Freed in hand. Pretty glad to get rid of it. That surprised me, didn't throw it down. Don't know why. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He could have done that with the City of Brass. Okay, so we got a bunch of colorless mana left, I think. Time walking, okay, doesn't really matter. Getting a new turn. Probably should consider untapping the mana vault now, yeah. Because I can still use them to play robots with colorless mana and I don't really need the extra damage from them <laughs> at this point. Being only at 13 points of life here and staring down three creatures. Mux coming out. Okay, passing the turn. That's not good at all. No creatures. Okay, time to get on here. I suppose he's ahead with all those elves and uh, just need a big beater. Okay, but lightning bolting one of the uh, Lanawa elves, I suppose that makes sense. I don't need the attacker against me. And I do have a lot of um, artifact mana here. Okay, but so does he. That's a green and a blue, uh, green and a white mox coming out. No lands though. At least not yet. Solring, oh man. And then an Urnum Jin. That's the classical way to run Urnum Gedan here, or Bantam Gedan in this case. Ah, oh, not enough. Just a priest. So he might be able to overrun me here. Here he comes. Four points of damage and a Sarah Angel coming out here with the pearl and the bird. Uh, providing the white mana for it. So an energy and a staring for straight after an Armageddon. <laughs> Just another Yorkmoth priest. Uh, looks like two d dark rituals and a bad lands in hand. But at this point I've been really trying to get uh, a disintegrate in hand because look at my mana and look at his life. I can give him six, seven, eight, nine points of damage uh, just with a disintegrate at this point. So that's my out here. But he's just really kicking into overdrive with an insist recall. Another Enumjin. I'm blocking one of the Enumjins with one of the priests. Serenity comes over. That's game. And uh, two cuts down. This is Disintegrate. My only ticket out. <laughs> so Bantam Geddon uh, wins the first match here. And there's a long and grueling match here. Uh, just... Winning like he's supposed to, uh, really kicking off after that Armageddon with a bunch of big beaters and non-land mana and uh, yeah, everything just clicked in the final rounds for him. But he had to move fast, I mean, because the moment I drew into an X spell, uh, that would be a match for the Infernal uh, Machine here. Okay. Starting off with the Badlands, he has a Lanawa Elf, this is round number two. Okay, immediately lightning bolting it here. Just trying to hold him back uh, from that early mana. Ooh, animate dead. That's pretty... Uh, that's not very polite. Just 
an undead elf providing mana for me here. It is good against all those Armageddons. Okay, he's time walking. Bringing himself into three mana sources now. Oh, four mana sources. And a seventy Befreed coming out. Now I have a sushi in hand and I could and I can get it out a turn earlier because of that Lano Elf. But I'm afraid that he'll at my end step just source the plowshare, the sushi, and then cast Armageddon. And I'll be stuck with that Serendipity be free there. So I'm making a quick judgment call, just disintegrating it straight out of the game. Using all my mana for that instead. There might come an Urnum Gen, but still, uh, I'm too afraid of him and Armageddon. And it's turned out to be the correct play here. And that's the source to plowshare. That's removing the Lenawa Elf here. Got a point of life, I shouldn't get that. The Elena Elf is only a 1-0 one, zero, uh, zero, one creature after it's been animated. Okay, drawing into an underground sea. I had a Diamond Valley in hand, but it doesn't provide mana. So it's just top deck mode here. Okay, he has a Elena Elf, one card in hand. I'm very lucky drawing into a Badlands here, having three points of mana. Oh, there's a Serenity Free though. Fourth mana source, and there's my Sushi. And he has now used two source to plowshares, but he has a third source to plowshare. Uh, and I'm electing to just eat the sushi with a diamond valley just to keep it in the graveyard instead. Um, and here we remember that I shouldn't get the second, uh, the one point of life from the Lenawa Elf. Uh, so we just remove it and I only gain uh, three from that sushi instead of four. Uh, instead, just to, yeah, just to keep it, keep it honest here. Uh, certainly we're coming over for three points of damage now. Though I have a bunch of life from that uh, diamond valley sushi. And this Sandy Befree does damage to him. So I can I can take this trade for for a while. Would be nice with a creature though. I think I have a wheel of wheel of fortune in hand. I'm not really sure. Perhaps not. What's that? Demonic tutor. Oh okay. No, he might I mind twist him. That's what I'm doing. And he just mana drains it, might as well. Now he'll get two mana in the next turn. And he might draw into something big like a s I don't know, an Omgen. Coming over again with the Serendi Befreed. It's another Mox. No, there's the Wheel of Fortune. Just need to draw into something because I'm I'm getting more and more behind here. Uh, with the Serenity Befreed being out like it is and just being in top deck mode. Mana Vault and a Factory and another Mana Vault. Okay, first Sushi coming out. Tapping out completely. But as long as I have the Diamond Valley, each time a Sushi hits the table, that's four points of life for me. Yeah, he disenchants it, that's fine. <laughs> just healing up. Oh, I like that Diamond Valley. It's pretty cheeky. So, yeah, I'm healing up, and the Serenity Befreed does damage to him each turn. So it really needs to work overtime here just to make up for it. Coming over again, swinging for three. He just put down a factory. Sylvan Library coming out. That's excellent here for him. Needs to draw into some more threats. Lenawa Elf. Okay. So we have a tap mana vault. I wonder if I'll untap it. Or if I have a lot of lot of colored spells. No, I'm untapping it. No need to take the extra points of damage. I do have a blocking factory against his factory and elf. So it's only that certainly be free that's a, an issue here. Sage of Latinam coming over. Uh, coming out. And a Triskillian. So that's either four more life for me or three points of damage to him. And one point of life for me. So the Freak does a point of damage to him again. And he looks through the top three cards of his deck with that Sylvan Library. Here's his second factory from Bantam Gedan. It's 
sonic blasting the Triskelion. So as a response, yeah, I like to shoot him for three and then eat it with the Diamond Valley. So he takes three points of damage, no, four points of damage, and I gain a life. <laughs> and we trade a card each. That's very nice, but yeah, he's still cracking open or removing all my blockers here. And also attacking with the factory. Here they come. Five points of damage this time. I'm at 20 point of life though. Just like to take it. Going down to 15 points of life. It keeps the factory back uh, just to handle my uh, eventual counterattack. I have a factory um, down there. So untapping one of the mana bolts and taking a point of damage in my upkeep. I could sack it with the Sage of Latam, but I'd rather wait. Uh, I can do it at my end step before I take damage next turn. I can't do it in my upkeep. I'll still, uh, to negate the damage, I'll still take damage from the uh, mana vault as both things will happen during the upkeep. So I can't sack it uh, before taking the damage. Okay, so just passing the turn here. I think the play now, yeah, I think I know what I'm up to here. I want to have the Sage of Latnam ready. This is just a long grind, just to really um, see if I can heal up faster than the Sandy Befreed can kill me. Uh, he seems to be able to remove all my threats all the time. Okay, so he strip mines my factory and I activate it and it pumps itself 3-3 three, three, and then I eat it with a diamond valley. <laughs> Even more life. Now he attacks with all the factories and all the sandy befreets. Uh, now, what I wanted to do here was block with the Sage of Latinam and then tap it to sack uh, the mana vault uh, at the end of the block and then eat it with the diamond valley for two points of life. Um, but now I can't do that because I used the diamond value on the factory, so I'd rather just wait and do it next turn because it will negate uh, one of the factories, so there's no point in rushing it. I'll just keep him alive for a single turn more. It's taking the uh, mana vault at my end step to draw a single card here, an extra card. Ooh, another mana vault coming out. Not what I really need. Though I suppose any damage spell here. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, I can. And 11 with the uh, Sapphire. So I'm actually within burn range. I have him within burn range now. And definitely now, he's down to 10 points of life now from the Serenity Befreed. Looking through the top three cards uh, of a Sylvan Library. And he is aware of this. I mean, the clock is on him, even though he's the attacker. So now I do the trick block one of the factories, sack one of the mana vaults eat <laughs> the sage so it blocks one of the factories negates the damage from the other one and i only take three points of damage because i, I heal up two and then get us an extra card out of it it's a lot of tricks here but uh, pretty fun <laughs> to play this deck so drawing into more cards is that a burn spell it might be i mean even a lightning bolt or a triskelion would be dangerous for him now Okay, I think I'm copying my mana vault. Uh, okay, yeah, I think. Yeah, bam, bye bye. Now I had a mana drain to back it up. The great play here would be just to burn him down to nine points of life and then keep the mana drain in back in hand. That way, if he counters me, I'll counter it. If he sorts the plowshares and is in stepped in order to get rid of his Serenity Befreed, I'll counter that. And uh, the Serenity Befreed will kill, kill him in his upkeep. So that's the superior play uh, compared with just burning him straight out. Okay, round number three. He starts off with a tropical island here. So it's 1 1 at this point, actually. Okay, he insists uh, at my end step, I think. 
No, before I, as a response to me playing the Mox Sapphire, so I can't have double blue. I can't use the Mox yet, if I had a Mana Drain in hand. So, it, then we pass the turn, and he now is well ahead in card advantage here. Bird coming out. At my instep, at his instep, I bolt the bird. Then play a factory, and then time twister. Yeah, a couple of good hands here, but I got rid of three soft plowshares and a couple of sandy befreeds, and I'm fine with that. It was just to ne to negate the card advantage she got from the incest recall, and I'm actually, um, yeah, I, I tapped all my mana, but I am a card ahead now instead of being behind both drawing into seven cards now didn't draw any marks in it seems so just passing the turn now oh, i do have a black lotus in hand i'm not playing it though it seems Okay, passing the turn. Oh, look at that. A lot of power. And there's the first Enumgen coming out of him this round. Now, without Source of Plushes, uh, it is tricky to get rid of him. All my creatures are only 4 4. Ooh, didn't draw a single mana producing land, it seems. Only a Diamond Valley. Good thing that wasn't a starting hand. Sage of Lutnam, Black Lotus, cracking it for a sushi. Okay. So, sushi and a Sage of Lutnam. And a factory. So, he attacks. Now, he might have a Soft Plowshare. And he might not. He likely has. But there's no, he will play it after he gets in anyway. So, giving it a good think. If he has a soft plasher, he will play it, um, no matter what I do. Also, he might be bluffing and then having, I don't know, a balance in hand afterwards. So I'd like to double block him instead. This is Sauce to Plowshares. He Sauce to Plowshares the Sushi and I eat it with the Diamond Valley. Uh, and he kills the Sage of Latinam. Now, if he had Sauce to Plowshares the Sage of Latinam, uh, I could have, uh, just to give me one life, I could have just eaten the Sushi for four life and uh, that would be it. Though I do think we might play this wrongly actually. I'm not really sure I can actually eat the Sushi because he's a blocker. Uh, Diamond Valley is a new card for me. I haven't ever owned one before. So uh, I, I do think that was played wrongly. Coming over the factory here. Yeah, but uh, as a Yakmoth priest, what I meant is if he sort of plush the priest, I'd gain one life from that and then four life from the sushi on the Diamond Valley. So the correct play was as he did here, sort of plush the sushi. Uh, and then letting the Enumgen just punch the Sage of Lutnam down. Okay, counter-attack him with the factory, he doesn't chance it. I pump it, and pump it again, and then I eat it. Now, another small thing here. Uh, he doesn't chance it as I activated the factory, that way I could pump myself. Uh, the factory could pump itself, and I could pump it for... He could have waited uh, until I attacked, and I could only have pumped it once. Just a small thing. State of Vietnam coming out here. So again, just a bunch of priests, but no robots. There might be a theme. I might have to go lighter on the priesthood and get some more robots in. Lano Elf coming out. Putting down a sushi.
then I'm, t I'm attacking with both priests here. And they are both 1 2, as said. So the Lana Wolf, he won't even be able to block them and uh, trade. He comes over with the Unimgen, I let it in. Oh, and he, oh man. Yeah, he casts Armageddon, so now that's the HO trick with these Unimgeddon decks. Having a big beater out and just being ahead in life. Oh, he's not even ahead, oh, slightly ahead in life, but he has that Unimgen down. He also has more mana. It did have a bad lane though. Imagine he, yeah, imagine he has some uh, removal in hand uh, to get rid of the sushi later on. Okay, counterattacking with the Sage of Vietnam and the sushi. Sacrificing... Oh, man. <laughs> Sacrificing the sushi. That's what I talked about. Getting eight mana out of it. Four black mana and four uh, colorless. Getting out a Tetravis and uh, another priest from that. Brutal. <laughs> Now, if I had a fireball in hand, I could actually sack it and just burn him out. Almost. Yeah, no, yeah, almost. Okay, so he attacks with the Unamjin. That's fine. And I elect to, um, yeah, split the Tetravus up as is its ability. So there's now four 1-1 one, one flyers here. And I'm demonic tutoring. And I'm being really cheeky here. I'll show you the tutor target in, in a in a bit here. Um, coming over with some of the uh, yeah with the to Travis and one of the priests and he double blocks the priests. Uh, with two nano elves, and then I sack the one one to Travis for six points of ma six black mana, <laughs> getting this one out. The Yakmoth Demon, six six flying first strike. <laughs> Hello, okay, so he attacks with the Unamjin here, and that does surprise me. Uh, I don't think he plays with Giant Growth. Oh, I know that he doesn't, so I just block it. Then he Sonic blasts it. Now. Then I remember, oh wait, he has first strike. He actually kicks the Urnumjin down uh, before he takes any damage. So th the Sonic Blast will not be enough. The Urnumjin won't touch him. So we just replay the, that part. And he takes the Sonic Blast back in his hand. And the Yakmoth Demon eats one of the 1-1 one, one artifact flyers here just to keep his upkeep or keep him happy. Coming over for six points of damage with two flyers, that's eight points of damage. And then third po three points of damage more with the Lightning Bolt for 11 points of damage, that's game. <laughs> so, Yakmoth Demon, man, <laughs> such a brutal demon coming over, uh, winning uh, the game for me here. And that was the two to target. So it's two to one. And we're starting off with the fourth round in this best of five here between us. The demon engine mulliganing down to six cards here though. He's on the play with a Mox Pearl and a Tropical Island. And I have a Mox of my own. And two turn round one here. Just skipping a bit forward while I shuffle through the deck and passing the turn to him. Savannah coming out and there's a Serenity Befreed. Turn two. And there's a Sage of Vietnam. Getting immediately soft to plush at. 
they are prime source to plowshare targets, actually, because they can get such a big card advantage if they get to stay there all through the game. Sandy Buffet coming out. Another one. So that's six damage to me and two to him each turn. That doesn't sound like a good bargain. A lot of early pressure. Oh, but I can't really play anything. So, passing the turn back to him, he takes two points of damage in his upkeep here, and then slamming in for six. Uh, looks like an Enemgen. Oh, a Sarah Angel, actually. Even worse. Yeah, you really need the source of plowshares here. It's a time twister, but now it's too late. Okay, I'm forfeiting the game. He'll do 10 points of damage next turn. I can't, I can't stop them. Even a time twist will almost tap me out. I can only remove them one at a time with an next spell. Yeah. Trying to get a, a Yakmoth demon out, but he, I would run out of, of artifacts pretty soon. And uh, yeah, it wouldn't work either. You just tap and do damage to me. So Bantam Gideon takes this one. So it's really a nail biter at this point. It's long games, 2-2 uh, two, two at this point. Uh, so we're coming into the final clash here between Bantam Gideon and the Demon Engine. It starts off with a Sol Ring here. Okay, and that's a, just an <laughs> even better start with a couple of mocks and then a mana vault. I can't really play anything uh, on top of it, but okay, he has a 70 free turn two. I imagine some robots must get out now, right? Or a fireball. Okay, Triskillian coming out. But we both have a clock on us now. He has a Seren to be freed, and I have that tap mana vault that I can't really untap it yet. Seren Angel coming down here and attacking with the Seren to be freed. And I'm taking another point of damage from the tap mana vault. Sol Ring coming down. Then a Sushi. Uh... I think I have to attack here, otherwise he'll, he can attack with the Sarah Angel so easily. So I'm asking for a trade, and he doesn't want to. So he takes four points of damage, and another point of damage in his upkeep from the Sarah to be freed. But Sarah is such a strong creature, so it doesn't tap when it, it attacks, so it doesn't even have to think, he can just keep on attacking with it. Coming over for seven points of damage here. He needs to untap that Sarah Angel though. She never taps. Okay. Another point of damage with that tap mana vault. Okay, now disintegrating the, the Sarah Angel. So it didn't really matter. I suppose we can just counter attack him now. For eight points of damage here. He's at, he's at six. And remember, I can use a Triskillin at any point in time. Now he suddenly blasts me. Putting me down to three, himself down to three, and me to four. I could have just uh, shot him with the Triskillian there, but I didn't do it. So he gets an enter face. So even though I can kill him at any point, I have to keep back with the Triskillian because he might have a Sonic Blast in hand, and he can get a draw then. Uh, so I'm waiting for to see if he casts another Sonic Blast on me. The reason for this is the rules for fast effects. Uh, now he comes over, now I have to do it. Uh, otherwise he'll kill me, that's five points of damage there. And I shoot him with the Triskillian and he dies. Yes, he had a regrowth in hand, but the moment he would try to regrowth his Sonic Blast, I'd just kill him with the Triskillian. The thing is here, if I have started off shooting him with the Triskillian, he could respond with a Sonic Blast or anything that did damage to me like that. And uh, it would be a draw. 
Uh, but if he casts Sonic Blast first, and I respond to that by using the Triskelion on him, uh, he dies before the Sonic Blast takes effect, and I win. That's why I kept a bit back with that Triskelion right there. Uh, but of, obviously I should have just shot him immediately after he was tapped out from the Sonic Blast. Just a small uh, minor detail here. So yeah, um, it the Demon Engine took this one 3-2, uh, to two, but it could easily have gone the other way. I mean, if Bantam Gideon had uh, played its usual main deck with its Energy Flux, then, uh, I'd be screwed. But I suppose after sideboard, once I've made a sideboard for this, um, uh, I'll have about four Red Blasts in uh, to tangle with those uh, Energy Flux, and, and it, we could have a real game here. But I haven't made a sideboard yet. This is just a deck I brewed for this particular occasion. But it was really fun to play, and uh, it did surprisingly well. But I mean, there are a lot of, uh, I mean, it's it's fully powered, and uh, has a lot of strong creatures in it as well. So, um, but it was nice to try to use that Diamond Valley and the Yakmoth Demon and all the priests, uh, Yakmoth priests, etc. So yeah, great fun. Really, really some a nice uh, round of five for this one. So yeah, thank you for watching this uh, long marathon of a match, uh, kitchen table magic style, and I'll be back with some uh, more games. There are some monobrew games and there are some more uh, uh, games between uh, tier one decks as well. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.